Is everybody ready? <laughs> you know that a software demonstration is like watching paint dry on a rainy day. If it's that interesting. So be prepared. This particular program that I have up on the screen is called Segmented Project Planner. It's been out, I would say, maybe 2001, something like that. It's one of the new ones, or one of their first ones, I mean. All of these softwares have one thing in common. They will give you some samples to work with. You can manipulate the sample. You can use different woods. You can use different number of layers different number of segments in a ring, um, and then print out the results. First thing, does everybody in the room know what segmented turning is? Okay. So I'm just going to go up to a file that I had opened earlier. I'll just open the cookie jar. So that's what you get. You open the file. This is one of the loaded ones. It's called Cookie Jar. Uh, it has a top on it. And if you notice, you're getting, he has 18 um, segments in each row. And it gives you, with that design, the number 1 to 12, and he tells you that it's 3 quarters of an inch thick, um, the outside diameter what the wall thickness is going to be. Now what the wall thickness is, and this program being one of one of is one of the first, and it's not a program that's ever been to me taken from a demo software version into what we would look at as a new Windows version of a program where everything is fancy and colored and all the rest of it. Uh, so I have found that I never used it a lot because it wasn't visually as nice as it could be. But you can go in and if you wanted to say on row number one, now are you you're picking that up? You'll notice across the top as number of sides or number of pieces, layer height, outer diameter wall thickness, gap width. If you wanted to do a ring that had a eighth inch segment of uh, walnut segment put in between two pieces of maple. That's where you could put in an eighth of an inch and it would reduce the size of the regular 18 inch pieces in order to stick a one eighth inch piece in between each of the segments. Those can all be adjusted. Uh, on this one it's a little more detailed because if you notice <coughs> over here he's got a 10 degree angle because he's got 18 sides. If it was 12 segments, it's 15 degrees. So these things can be adjusted into them. Um, I'll go to another one just so you can see something that... There's a bowl. That's normally what you think of as segmented turn. You can see that there's nine layers. Up at the top. Now, I'm sorry that my screen is cutting off the number. There's row numbers to the left of sides. And it's because of the resolution of this compared to the resolution of that. Uh, but you can go in and pick a particular side. You see down at the bottom it has a color. If you wanted to go in and change the color, you can change the color. Um, notice here. You can pick colors as well. You can change it to just plain white if you want. And that row will become white. I'm not going to stay on this very long because it's not very... Yes? you got a picture there. Is that... If the machine is, is generated uh, at your specs. Is that image close or really close or not too close to the final product? Very close. It is, okay. So yes. You can get a good visualization. Yes, yeah. it is. And this is the limitation with this particular one, uh, that it doesn't have a lot of flexibility compared to a lot of the other new ones. So I'm quickly going to go to one that's called Segmented Pro. The global company is called Woodturners Pro, and the gentleman has four different softwares. Segmented Pro is the newest one. 
and it happens to be one that was designed for beginners. And you'll notice that I'll go up. If I go into bold view, this is Glenn's program, not mine. What am I missing, Glenn? Well, let me go to the other one. Profile. Yeah, I'll come to me in a minute. Let me go to this one. I know this one all better. Sorry about that. Um, I'll open up one of these. Kevin's bowl. That's not what we wouldn't think of as a bowl. This is, Woodturner Pro is that same company's original program that I started with. I'll go back to the segmented pro when my brain kicks in. Uh, but with this one, you can see um, you have over here, if I come down and highlight on a ring, it will tell you what you have. If I go up here, it gives you a shadow outline of what that is. So you have a solid base. And he has two little laminations at the bottom, two veneers. Then they have put in different segments and built up. You can do all these from scratch as well. What I clicked on there shows you what has been computed as the wall thickness. So when you design one, if you take one of their samples, this is all set up, but that doesn't mean that you can't come in and change that. When I clicked on the second one down, you see I've got another list. So over here, the number of segments, if I wanted to go to 24, I can go to 24 segments, I can change the thickness, I can change the diameter, of the row that I'm on. All of these are variable. I'm going to make one here in a second and you'll see what I mean. If I go in and want to do a new one, it gives me nothing. It gives me a base block and that's all it gives me. If I want to add a second row, it's going to add a second row. At the top, you'll see it's set up as 12, which is what I have in as a default. I changed the top from 12 segments to 18 segments. So if I look at, if I click on that row, which it's, if I highlight it, and come up at the top, there's a little section up here which gives me the view of the ring. <clears throat> so as you build them, you can change that. If you looked at it and said, no, I don't want 18 segments. I want 24. It changes it to 24. If I want 64, it gives me 64. So all of these things can be changed, and if I go back to the view, you see that I have a solid block on the bottom, and I have a ring that's got 64 segments. If I come down at the bottom and add an extra row, it will duplicate the size of that row in its entirety if you don't change a parameter. So if I come up here and look at it and say, well, the outside diameter was 4, I want that now to be 5, because I want it to start going up like a conventional bowl, it will make it a little bigger. If I add a new row, the software knows that I've started to go up on an angle, and it just picks it up and keeps going with it. And you can change the wood this right now, if you notice here, it's set up as ash. If I want to go in and pick whatever wood, it'll pick up and give me a new wood. 
it will also let you go in and change the segment itself. So you could say, I want a cherry, I want a maple, I want a black wood, and I want a poplar. And you can change so that 64 segments may have eight different woods, and it would just duplicate it around the ring. So if you look at a lot of the segments, there was some segmented items out in the, in the show. There was a tall vase that was basically one color and he had a feature ring. So if he was going into the software, he could build his vase up independently, get to that spot, and then say, okay, I want that to be something special. Now, that can be brought in as a pre-done sample, or it can be something that you can build over time. Now, if I thought, is three rows enough? Well, how high am I getting? Well, I'm three quarters times three, not very high. So if I want to continue, it will continue to go up. And you notice the picture just gets smaller so that I don't go on the outside of the boundary. So that top row now is 18 inches big. If I come down to this one and pick that particular row, well, I may say, no, I don't want that. I want that to be 12.5. And maybe I come down to this one, and I want this one to be 12.5. Oh, okay. Well, that's a little bit good. You can start to change the profile. That's all doing it by hand. He has, and you'll see that these all integrate in a way, and all I want to do is just touch on the four or five of them, because all of these programs now have extremely good tutorials on YouTube. I looked it up today to see how many of those, and they're just rows of them, where you can go in, you get the program, all of the programs I'm going to show are available for 30 days for free to try them. You can go into to face, um, YouTube and look for uh, Wood Turner Pro and you'll have a video that will take you from the basics all the way through to the development at the end. Um, this is really how you would do it if you didn't have anything down on a sheet of paper. But if you look at that and said, well, what does that ring actually look like? we got a ring that's so big that it's not going to print out on paper. So what it will do, if you wanted to print that circle, it will print out on whatever number of pieces of pages that you need, and then you can just put them together. It doesn't shrink it down. It will actually print them full size. Rarely will you ever need one, probably, but that's how they do how the printing goes. If I wanted to change that particular segment, I could go in and change it to something else. But one other thing that he's developed, and I'm just going to close that out, is he's made a product that's been around from the beginning. It's called 3D Design Pro, and it's a sister of that software. And this is the one that's probably as close as what SketchUp would be. Uh, you can come in, and I'm just going to use one that I had open. It shows you a pre-designed boss. And Yoki, if you just want to pass those around and have a look, those are not all of the designs that's preloaded into this piece of software. Now, part of the issue that you see on the screen, you see the there's something up in the little left corner that you don't, that you can't get. Well, that's because of my laptop. This laptop, the screen resolution in this laptop is so high that his software doesn't work well with it. 
And I went to the website to find out, and it's really designed for the resolution that you get in a, in a desktop, not a higher-end laptop like this one. So you don't get a perfect picture. And on this screen, I'm not getting it either. But you can see the edge of it. This will allow you to manipulate it. And if I manipulate it, it manipulates the picture as well. So this is the one where you can take a stock sample, <coughs> modify it. Maybe you want to make that vessel a little taller and a little, small, a little narrower at the center. You can do that. Once you're done editing it, if you think that's fine, I can transfer that picture back into the Woodturner program that I was using before. And that's how I started using it. I didn't design anything on my own. I went to the pro the, the program that had all the program, all the pictures. I manipulated them a little bit. In the prior program, in this one, it doesn't let you put any sizes in. It lets you change the shape. So if you had an idea in your mind of a shape that you wanted, and you had a piece of wood that was four inches in diameter and seven inches high, or four inches by seven, let's say. Well, can that fit in to your four by seven? Well, we don't. Sure. But when we bring it over to Woodturner Pro, it asks you, before it does anything, do you want to go by the height or do you want to go by the width? And if we look at that vessel, we know that it's really wide. And if I have a piece of stock that I know is only going to come out at four inches in diameter, after I've got it turned around, I change that to four. And what it does, it shrinks, if you look up top here, board thickness half inch, diameter four inches. It's talking about the board on the bottom. And that's how they, they just kick out a default bottom board that is the width that you asked for. So in this case, I have a vessel that I know is no more than four inches in diameter. And that was all my block was going to do. So you can get relatively close to what a SketchUp program may do. The other ones don't do this very, very well. So I've got it to that point. It automatically gives me a, gives me a base block of a half an inch. And the system generated that because of the height. They know it's only four inches across and it's not very tall. <coughs> so the system has just said, we're going to use half inch layers. Doesn't mean you couldn't change that up here to three-quarter inch layer. If you did that, it shows it as a three-quarter inch layer. But proportionally, it's too thick because you can see where the inside of your bowl is, or your vessel is right there. So you would want that to be less than what it is. So if we go back to the half inch, you can see that they're saying, okay, you got the bottom covered, you can carve that out a little bit when you turn it and you're safe. But we don't have any more wood going up. I want to add an extra row. So it adds a row. I've asked for it to be a segmented row, or the system did it automatically because that's how I have it set up. It did it based on 12 inches. Or 12 seconds, sorry. If I want to change it, I can change it to 16 seconds. I can change it to whatever number of segments that you can easily calculate. So if I'm happy with it being 16 segments, 3 quarters of an inch thick, and if you notice the species was ash, well that just happens to be the default species, because there's all the different woods that are in there. Mm -hmm. And they're all in there with a representative color. <coughs> if I change the computer default, it will actually give me a brown walnut wood chip. But one takes more resources than the other. So, 
So I've got a, I've got my first segmented row. They're saying three quarters of an inch. Well, if I have a half inch bottom, I'm going to put in a half inch ring to go with it. I never have the base thicker than what the rest of the segment rows are. It just doesn't look good. So if I'm happy with that, I can just keep going with my half inch segments. So by the time I get to this row, I'm at the top of the vessel. I'm slightly over using half inch. So I've got a basis one, and then I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten segmented rows. <coughs> it's not finished yet because it doesn't match the profile that I want it to be. So over on the other side, over there, they have this little item, multi-row resize. If I just say proportional and come up to the top, and you'll see up here there's a little wizard guy, and say profile snap, <laughs> it changes it. Hmm. Now, by default, it changes, it makes the segments <coughs> just big enough for you to turn the profile doesn't give you anything extra at all unless you put it in. Now, you may look at that and you say, well, if that is only four inches across, that wall thickness is pretty thick. You know, without doing anything, you know that that's probably a half an inch or more, and it's going to be thinner than that. But if you're happy with that wall thickness, you may want to go up, and if I said, this particular row here, well, I don't know if I'm going to be that good a turner that I can just shave off the points because in turning, what you're going to be doing is shaving the points off the outside and shaving the points off the inside. If you're really good, you'll get a nice consistent wall thickness. If you're new, you may look at that and say, there's no way in hell I'm going to turn that and not screw it up. So you need to change the thickness. So on the left arrow key, it lets me widen the segment out. If I hold the key a different way, <coughs> this one's right arrow plus control, it lets me widen it out. Now I can do that for one row or every row. If I want to do every row, I click on them all, and whatever I do on the on the main row automatically populates through the rest of it. So you can take this design, you can build in whatever color wood you want. You could go to, if you look at that particular row, if I come up to the top and hit the segment view, that tells you and gives you a representative picture of what walnut actually is. Because I had chosen walnut earlier. If I wanted to pick a particular segment, I can pick that segment, and if I wanted to change the wood, I can change the wood in the segment. Uh, I can have every second one or every fourth one or whatever divides equally between the number of, between 16. So I could say, I want every other one to be maple. Then I'll get two walnut and one maple. So this can be done, and you have a little picture down at the bottom. It doesn't show up well because of the screen conflict. But it gives you an idea of how big this is. So if you look up on the up on the side, you see that the outside diameter of that ring is four and nineteen thirty seconds. Remember when we made it originally, we wanted the outside wall thickness at four inches. But this is the row that I widened out to give us more room to cut. So therefore, the diameter is nineteen thirty seconds bigger. 
meaning it's eight and a half, 30 seconds wider on each side. So you've got more room to play. If I wanted to add a spacer here, and I said, well, gee, that looks nice, but I want to put in a spacer, it will allow me to put in a spacer. And what it will do, it was, will adjust each size. Now it's hard to see, but on the screen I can see that there's actually a little spacer stuck in there. I just didn't change the color of the spacer. But this is how you can take a simple design that they provided, and there's a lot of, a lot of different designs in there. You can modify it a little bit. You can adjust the height. You can bring it from Segmented Pro or from um, the designer into here. But even if it's in here, if you look at that and you say, gee, that looks okay, but I don't know if I really like it. The modification that he added in not that many years ago was that you can actually come down and modify it here. That was the thing we griped about in the early version, is if you made it in the original program, you couldn't amend it at all when you brought it over. So now you can bring it over. I know that's a very short way through this, but another program that's out there. Now remember, if you want um, to learn about segmenting in the software, it's not an over-the-night thing. I remember when I got the first one, which is the very first one I showed you, I just, I just bought it. Because there was only two available in the marketplace at the time. And I brought it home and I thought, what have I got myself into? I went and I bought Woodturner Pro, the one we were just using, a couple months later because it was so much easier to use than the first one. Because it had more, there was more visual to it, you see? But if you remember the, the tall vase that was out in the show, the segmented one, and it had the band in the center, a feature ring. He has another program called Laminate Pro. Laminate Pro will tell you how to get a feature ring designed and cut. Now, I'm just going to use the one that's popped up here, and it's showing five rows, a walnut, a holly, blackwood, another holly, and a purple one. So I'm just going to say, okay, that's fine. So when you make a feature ring, you start with a lamination. Now this lamination, the width of those pieces can be changed. We can have three laminations, four laminations, five laminations, whatever laminations you want. In order to start getting the designs that you see, you have to start, you have to cut them and put them back together. So in this sample, they're saying, well, if we cut that lamination on the, on the table saw at 30 degrees, and we make all those little cuts, what happens? Well, if I go up here and ask it to show me generation number one, that's what happens, that's the result. So over here, you've had your original board, you cut it at 30 degrees, and I can change that angle um, as much as I want. Now this is where you can spend three weeks if you're somebody who wants to see. Well, what would it look like if I did this? Because if you change that angle a degree or two, it makes a big difference. It's like the PowerPoint to wood during. Is this the right move? Yeah, uh, well, it, it's like me and my wife's discussion about the white cabinet tree that she wanted a couple of years ago. Like, how white is it? Yeah, uh, and my white and her white don't match. Mm. So, 
We take the slab and we cut it. If I go to first generation, what it shows that if I take those pieces and flip every other one, that's what I get. So I can have those little chevrons, or I could, and, and if I wanted to use that as a strip, I could just cut it here, make it parallel, and, and cut it up and use it for whatever. Uh, it might be the face of a clock. We don't know what we're going to use it for because it has nothing to do with, with wood turning per se. It's making a design. So if I want to know what happens if I cut it again at 30 degrees, if I go to generation two, it shows what happens if you take that board, cut it at 30 degrees, and stick it back together again. And if I go back to here and say, well, I didn't like that 30 degrees, what if I go back to 20? You get a different design. If I go up to if I go to 45, that's the design. And all that is is taking strips of wood, cutting them on an angle, putting it back together into a strip, cutting it again on an angle. And you'll see people will make these designs that you can use them for a face of a clock, all kinds of things. Which really has nothing to do with making a bowl, but it enables you to make a funky design which you then <coughs> cut into segments and make as your feature ring. And there, the permutations are endless in this stuff. You just go on and on and on. If you wanted to cut a game, it would be called a third generation. If you cut it again, so you can see that depending on how thick the, or how wide the laminations were, that design will get so busy and the pieces will be so small that they kind of lose themselves sometimes. Now granted, those, the lamination was glued, and every time you cut it and reassembled it, it's glued. So everything is as tight as can be. But when you put that through your table saw, if we go back to this one, when you run that through your table saw at 45 degrees, if it is 44.98. That design does not work. There will be somewheres in that design where something's up here, or something's down there. And you, what's wrong? And you go back, and your saw is not 45. Is that taking the width of the curve into account? Yes. All of the softwares you can, all of the ones that they had, you can dictate your saw curve from, I think it's a sixteenth up to, God, a quarter of an inch or something ridiculous. Um, but, but this is where you can get into some real headaches doing this kind of stuff. They do give you in the softwares some pre-made ones, some little, some diamonds. Uh, you know, zigzags, these types of things where you just go click, you get the picture, you put the picture in. But also, you need to have a cutting diagram and instructions. The software will generate a cutting diagram that says these are the pictures, or these are the woods that you need, these are how thick they are, da da da, and here's this hanging cut. If you're using that design right there, yes. to make, you know, that's just a straight <coughs> If you wanted to make that into a clock face, you have to take each segment and taper cut it? You can actually design them big enough to make a round clock face. If you can manipulate what you're doing. But each one of those cuts is, is straight so far. Those are just straight cuts. 
Now, if I wanted to make a clock face with this, I have to do, approach it differently or taper cut those? It would be in the way you do the cutting of the lamination. Okay. Yeah. And, and there is, when you go in to look for demos and how to run this software, you will see where people have done these types of things. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can get back to this particular program, and... This is the one that one of our members uses, and I'm going to just pick that bowl. This particular software was the one developed for beginning segmented turns. It's new, it's about two years maybe, but it is a program that visually you can see exactly what you need to see. That first program I showed you doesn't get into this. So here you have a profile. If I want that profile, I can manipulate it. You can see what it looks like on the inside, what it looks like on the outside. Because remember, when you make a feature ring like this one, it goes all the way through. It's not just a veneer on the front of the segment. It's actually the depth of the segment. And all of the segment moves, of course it's tapered, but this program gives you a lot of designs. It doesn't allow you to manipulate all of the things that the Woodturner Pro one does. This is a design one, a, a beginner one. It's an extremely good one, and it gives you a lot of shapes to work with, not as many as the, the handout I was sending around. But down at the very bottom, and I don't know if it's going to come up on the screen. Yeah. Let me go to a different. Let me just forget about for a second. Oh, maybe I can do it. Down here, you'll see it's got a feature ring in it. If I can down and say there, tornado bowl. We've seen tornado bowls. And if I come over here. And I want to change the number of segments. It changes the number of segments. When you go to Segmented Pro and you want to look at tutorials, they have some very good ones. And they show how, I believe it's three products, three of these were actually designed in the software. And they go through the design process. One of the ones, there's only three of them, and one of the guys that has a design in there is one of the very early, extremely good guys to do saying I met him years ago at a symposium. And I believe it's number three in the, in the video. This is, is a bowl designed by Glenn McCarran. And I don't know if you know it's in the video, YouTube video or not. I've seen it today. I've seen it on the website, but I've never seen it in the design. And it was your bowl of... Was it last year's bowl or the year before? The year before. year before. And it was the one that, you know, with all the different shapes and sprawls down. So here, you look at that. I've changed that so that it has 60 segments. I can keep it going up. You know, as many segments as you want. And you can see what it looks like. If I want to set if I want to come down to the bottom here, and I look at it and say, well, since I've never made a segmented item, I think I better click novice. <coughs> novice is going to bring you back to starting reality of twelve pieces, not eighty or a hundred pieces. So you can put in different colors, you can put in wood patterns, you can add feature rings, but this product here is much easier to use for a beginner and it has a lot of really good stuff. The very first program I showed you, which is the, the old-fashioned basic type, $37 US. 
The other ones I've shared you are $79 US. You can buy them all individually. The designing one that I use, that actually is a free product now, and when I got it, I had to pay for it. But he sells all of, there's four of them for $139 US. So you need to buy one for $79 or the, all of them that he has. So it's a really good deal for somebody who wants to get into it. But remember, you can download it, put it on your computer for free, and run it for 30 days. You can watch the videos before or after you get it. And you look at it and say, I wouldn't do one of these if my life depended on it. <laughs> Versus, gee, I think I want to try one. <laughs> As well, there's, I've had questions, well, I want to make a segmented bowl. I just want to know how big the piece is supposed to be. And there's a Kevin's wood turning. This information is going to be in the newsletter. Kevin's wood turning at turnwood.com has an online program where you put in I've got I want my bowl to be six my layer to be six inches I want 12 segments and he tells you exactly how much to cut also we have one on our website in the tips and tricks I think it's section that Richard Ford put in it's a basically an Excel spreadsheet type of program it's Richard's not here. It's not user-friendly when you look at it. Uh, the turn wood one, which is one, to, one that you can use online for free, is very user-friendly. He also has a phone app that you can buy for $15 where it does it all, the calculations plus some designing, and you can just run it on your phone. That's it. I've burned up my time, whether you've understood any of it or not. <coughs> on this program, now, there you start with, what, 12 segments, 12 yep. rings. Does it tell you how much lumber you have to... Yes. Consume? It will give, all of these programs will give you a printout of everything you need. The number of pieces, the length of the pieces, uh, the angles that you have to cut it at. They all provide that. Because at some point, you need enough pieces more sawdust than lumber to left. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever look at one of the... You want to <laughs> if you look at Glenn's bowls, with little pieces that are an eighth of an inch or less, you can imagine how detailed and analytical and precise you have to be to do delicate work. A 12 segment bowl needs a, 90, a vertical saw blade, perfect 90, and perfect 15 on it to cut on an end. And that's not that hard. And you can make a segment of bowl. You never have to turn end grain again. You know, that's the biggest thing. There is no end grain in segmenting. It's all side grain. That's why we get such a good finish in those little thin wall pieces. Anyway, that's my stuff. I told you it was going to be boring and dry. And I think I probably succeeded in being boring and dry. But they asked me. Thank you.